Ukon out of Nigeria, the 7 1, 230 pounder. He's going to be a big body to mess with down low. Yeah, but big, big Jeremiah Bear Cherry is going to have his work cut out for him on the inside. But again, for the Rebels, they not only have Bear Cherry, they've got some guys on the bench. We talked about Jacob Banerby, you got Isaiah Cottrell as well. And big Rob Whaley is a big low that can push anybody around. But the Rebels have to make sure they don't allow too many inside baskets early or paint touches because that's going to collapse that defense. It's going to allow the things to open up on the outside, especially for Matt Lock Jr. Well, everybody getting set at center court as we get set for our first radio television simulcast for the 2024-2025 campaign. Bear Cherry against Obong Ukon in the center of the court. Ball's in the air, tipped back, and the season is underway. Rebels defending from right to left as the opening tip-off is one back to T.J. Madlock, and the offense swings around for Alabama State. Octave now up to Madlock again on the left elbow. Takes a pick from Ocon and goes around to the right. Addition back upstairs. Here's Omar Knox, the sophomore out of Memphis. He drives in the lane. A travel call before elevating from the free throw line. Extended right. Alabama State in their gold and white uniform. Turning it over early. The Rebels will go from left to right with the white unis. Gray and red trim. And it'll be Jalen Hill to inbound. Alabama State into the trap right away. His first handoff of the year is to Jalen Bedford as he brings it up from left to right to get it started. Covered by C.J. Hines wearing number three. Bedford crossing half court. Hands to D.J. Edon Thomas Jr. standing on the logo. Dribbles to the left, looking for a pass. Skip pass down to the paint, tipped away by Jalen Hill. He's on the left side of the paint, guarded tightly by Micah Octave. He spins into the paint, bounces it to Jerry. He kisses it off the glass from the right side baseline. Rebels on top, 2-0 to start the year. And that's one of the things, when you add Jalen Hill, a guy that can not only score, he can facilitate soft hands, great feel for the game, able to draw that defense to find Big Jeremiah. Alabama State resets the offense as Amar Knox swings right side to C.J. Hines. He dishes back to Knox to the left side. From the elbow, he'll try a tray and he'll drain it. Nothing but net a minute into the first half. It's Alabama State on top, 3-2. Enon Thomas Jr. quickly brings it up the right side. As he tries to dish, he's triple team. Help that out to Jalen Hill at the top of the key. Now back to Thomas on the right side, bouncing it to Cherry. Cherry goes to work on Ocon, spinning. Resets back outside. He elevates and hits the hook shot from the baseline. 4-3 UNLV. And again, big bear, Mark, Jeremiah Cherry. Big soft hands on the inside. Great footwork. A guy that can create some space, but also can finish softly at the hoop. Octave fakes the catch and shoot the other way. Resets at the top of the key to TJ Madlock. Working it around on the motion offense. Knox swings back to Madlock on the right side. Madlock tries the drive, goes through Jaden Henley, and an offensive foul called. And a turnover with 18-26 remaining in the half. Gives the Rebels the ball up one. And again, for the Rebels, these first two of these first three possessions, they've been able to force turnovers. Uh, a travel here, a loose ball going out of bounds. But in that second possession, again, they want to eliminate drives to the basket, but you can't help too much. Leave open those open shooters. They've got to try to find that good balance of give and flow. DJ Thomas sparks out the offense. Dishes right side to Jalen Bedford. Swinging it around at the top of the key. Works it around to Bedford on the other side. In front of the Alabama State bench on the far sideline. Now back up to the top for DJ. He spins around to Marnox. Resets with 10 on the shot clock. He dribbles right, spins left, tripped in the lane, and he goes down in a heap as the whistle's blown. And the first foul of the game goes against Amar Knox. The CT, as we get here into the early stages of this one, your keys to the game as we talk to look at CT's keys on the video side of our simulcast. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be important like we talked about. One of those first possessions, the Hornets were able to get a wide open catch and shoot threes. The Rebels want to make sure that they limit those three-point looks for them. Uh, they shot 33% last year, but as we talked about in the open, they liked to add shooting to this. The second thing is going to be biggest for the Rebels to get back in transition defense. And on the inbound, Jalen Hill turns it over. Alabama State, though, on the other end, kicks it out of bounds on the baseline. 17.56 to go in the half. Rebels with the ball again on top 4-3. Right on cue. you got to get back in transition defense. You've got to make sure you don't give up any fast break points. You want to make sure you get your defense set. And when they do, they want to keep the ball in front and make Alabama State execute in that half court. Um, and then thirdly, they got to make sure that they try to get out in transition themselves. Get stops, get runouts, make life easy. Don't make DJ have to operate in half court every time down. Rebels on top 4-3 as Jalen Hill swings it around to the outside. Jalen Bedford on the right side elbow. Guarded tightly back upstairs to Deedon Thomas Jr. The Hornets triple team him at the top. DJ with a swing pass. Right side. Catch and shoot tray for Bedford. No good off the back of the iron. Takes a big bounce out to Jaden Henley, who's got it on the right side of the lane as he goes back out to three-point land in front of Gucci Rowe. 17-20 to go in the half. He's looking for Cherry. Wide open shot. He tries a tray and drains it. Jaden Henley, the former DePaul guard, yeah, gives the Rebels a 7-3 lead. On the other side now, swinging it around. And back upstairs to Micah Octave. Micah Octave over to Amar Knox on the right, guarded by Bedford. And the foul called away from the ball. Looks like that one's going to go on Jaden Henley, junior six foot seven wing out of Ontario, California, who just trained at Trey 
They'll be called for the Rebels' first foul of the year. 17-04 in the first half. 7-3 UNLV as Julian Rishway checks in. Former Florida Gator replaces Jalen Hill. On the baseline, Alabama State to inbound. It's to Okar. He's standing in front of the UNLV bench on the far side. The 17-minute mark. He dishes back upstairs to Hines, guarded by Rishway. On a catch and shoot, Trey Amar knocks from long range, drains it from the right side elbow. Makes it a one-point game with 7-6 the score. That was a big focus for the Rebels here at shoot around this afternoon, was making sure that they focus on those baseline out-of-bounds plays. You don't want to give up baskets. You want to push them away from the hoop. But again, the common theme, you've got to make sure you get back to shooting. With well, a one-point lead, Thomas goes coast to coast and drains a lay-in with the left hand. He was nearly unguarded until he got in the paint. 9-6 the score. And from right to left, Tony Madlock barking signals from the Alabama State bench. And the gold jerseys. And it's back up top to Madlock, and a foul called away from the ball on the offense. And it's going to go against C.J. Hines, his first, and Alabama State's second of the first half. Jeremiah Baird, Cherry to the bench. Here comes Rob Whaley in for the first time. See what kind of energy he brings in this contest. And again, most people probably expect a big Rob Whaley to be able to start this season based on what, how he finished last year. The highlight dunks, playing in transition. Uh, but for him, again, co for Coach Kevin Cook, you want to make sure you have balance. And so if they're trying to piece things together, first game of the year, you're trying to see which lineups really work best. You're not playing against yourself anymore, so you'll be able to kind of see how things shift. Rebels with a three-point lead as Henley has it at the top, gives to Rich Wayne on the right elbow, guarded by Micah Octave. He fakes left, drives right, resets with the dribble behind the back. It's to DJ at the top, pushes left side. It's in the hands of Jalen Henley. He'll try a pull-up tray from the far side baseline. No good. And the rebound into the awaiting hands of Octave. 15-55 to go in the half. As Madlock takes it on the handoff, drives the right side of the lane, goes around Rishway and lays it in. Nothing but net on the layup, making the score 9-8 again. And those are the types of drives the Rebels want to eliminate. You can't just allow a guy to catch it at 25 feet, put his head down, take two dribbles, and get to the rim. Thomas gets to the free throw line before looking for a pass. He bounces it downstairs, and Jalen Bedford, rather Jaden Henley, couldn't hold on. And he knocks it away with 15.37 to go in the first half. First media timeout of the season. We'll take it with him. It's UNLV 9, Alabama State 8 with 15.37 to go in the half. This is the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Are you able to tell Devin? The ultimate outdoor amphitheater built for the ultimate sports fan with a colossal screen that brings the game closer than ever. Reserve a day bed, private cabana, or lounge in the center of it all. Six pools to dive into as the game heats up. And the best part, there's never an off season. Open 365 days a year. Stadium swim, it's always spectator season. Gatorade, the world's most superior sports drink. Speed to me, voice-wise, is kind of low. And refuel. It fuels the best because it is the best. Gatorade, is it in you? Gatorade, the world's most superior sports drink. I'm going to check my mic one more time. It fuels the best because it is the best. Gatorade, is it in you? The holidays. <laughs> and holiday trips. And holiday toys. And holiday bonding. And it all comes together in a Chevrolet. Find your red tag. Get 1.9% financing on all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Plus, get 3750 total value on this Silverado when you trade in an eligible vehicle. <laughs> Rebels on top of Alabama State, 15-37 to go in the first half. And for the first time tonight, we welcome in Steve Cofield. Steve, how are you? Well, good to see Bear Cherry, who's now out of the game, get into a groove early on. You know, his conditioning is going to be a big deal this season. Uh, told me about a week ago that he came in here at 303 pounds. He's now down to 272, dropped his uh, body weight by 6%. You remember that was an ongoing story with Rob Whaley. So Bear recognizes... This level from the Juco level, he's got to be in a lot better shape, and he's got to be able to play defense up and down the floor. Otherwise, he's not going to play. After the turnover, Alabama State trailing by a point. Brings it from right to left. They give us to Madlock on the free throw side of the left. Or left side of the free throw line, I should say. 
misses off the left side of the rim. It goes out of bounds on the baseline. And with 15-22 to go in the half, the Rebels trying to find some separation here, CT. Yeah, it's going to be important, just like Steve said, I mean, for Bear to be able to get some minutes here, to be able to, to give them that another big body, but that also the inside scoring threat. And you've got to tip your hat to him for being able to come in this summer to lose a bunch of weight, to get himself into playing shape, to be able to start this first game. Aiden Henley at the top of the key gives to D.J. Thomas, the co-freshman of the year in the Mountain West last year, drives right, swings left, Rishway, catching two, three, you bet. Nothing but net for the 6'6 grad transfer, Julian Rishwain. Those are going to be a lot of wide open shots that are going to be there for Julian Rishwain, as well as Bedford, um, as well as Henley. Going to have to knock down those open threes. 12-8 UNLV as Alabama State pushes the tempo. Now slows it up with Brooklyn Hicks into the game for the first time defensively. Another newcomer, Jace Whiting, waiting to check in on the bench. 14-42 to go in the half. Is on the right side. C.J. Haynes picks up the dribble. Resets up top to Madlock. Madlock drives around Hicks. Whaley swats him. Block goes out of bounds at the baseline. An early block party for Rob Whaley. You've got to love the excitement that you see from the block, obviously, right in front of the Rebels bench. All the guys jump up. They're cheering. They're picking up their teammate. This is the type of infectious energy that you want to see from a team, especially the first game out, out of the gates. Hopefully they can build on it, and it's better to see it at the defensive end like it's happening. Hornets maintain possession, although four seconds on the shot clock. They inbound it on the alley-oop. Just Steven Walker on a catch-and-shoot lay and drains it. 12-10 UNLV. Here's Chase Whiting with the first touch of the year. Former Boise State Bronco brings it from left to right. Slowly dribbling, now hands to Hicks on the right side. Hicks to Henley, and they over to Rishwain. Rishwain dumps downstairs. Hicks goes up through some pressure. He gets around Octave and lays it in with the right. Rebels have made six out of their first eight shots from the field, and they lead it 14-10. On the other end, a catch-and-shoot three from Octave goes. He got duped defensively. And made up for it and then some. 14-13 after the make. And that's where, again, for the Rebels, you, you come down, you get a great offensive possession after a big stop, a big block, get some energy in the building. But they're coming back the other way. You just fall asleep, take a possession off, allow them to knock down a three. Halen Henley over Rishwain on the right side. Rishwain who started at San Francisco. Rather Boston College, then San Francisco. And then Florida. He dribbles. He resets the fadeaway tray. It's the back of the rim. And a high arcing make. Oh, what a shot from Rishwain. 17-13, the UNLV lead. Well, that can be fun if Julian's going to make those types of shots off behind the back step back threes. Alabama State trying to find an answer defensively. Meanwhile, they've kept up offensively. Madlock brings it up. Goes to the right side. Just Steven Walker for three, and he drops it. Alabama State matching UNLV. They're now four for four from long range. And again, that's one thing we talked about, Matt, here. Allow a team to get some open, some open shots, some confidence, knock them down. The bass can seem as big as the ocean. Jace Whiting out of Idaho. Over to Rishwain on the right side. Rishwain back upstairs to Henley, and a foul called away from the ball. That's going to be on C.J. Hines with Brooklyn Hicks trying to drive back up to the top of the key. 17-16 UNLV as Hill comes back into the game. See who he ends up replacing. And the streak continues, though, C.T. 1,228 straight games for UNLV with a three. This has become a common theme here for the Rebels. Every game they've played with the three-point line, they've made a shot. And that's one thing that the team's not worried about. But we know that the Rebel faithful is definitely focused on that. We get to continue that streak. Whiting trying to inbound from under his own basket, but couldn't find an open teammate. So he's forced to call a timeout with 13.05 remaining. 17-16, UNLV on top. And Alabama State had reset. They are going to call the five seconds. So he did not get the timeout in in time. Reynolds ran a pretty intricate inbounds play, but couldn't get anything going. I thought he was able to get that timeout in, but not in the opinion of the officials. And now Alabama State inbounds from underneath their own basket. They'll take it the length of the floor, trailing 17-16. Rebels have led the entire way. Both teams have made their last three shots from the field. Motion offense at the top of the key. Sees it with Micah Simpson going from the baseline to the top of the key. He drives, gets it back to Walker from the top of the key. Another wide open three falls for just Stephen Walker. And Alabama State with the first time tonight leads it by a 19-17 score. And they've now made their last five shots from the field. Whiting gets it across half court through some pressure from Simpson. He's on the far side in front of the Alabama State bench before giving up to Hill. Hill dribbles once, pushes it right side to Hicks. Hicks fakes left, drives right now over to Rishwain on the left side baseline. Rishwain drives, goes up and under. He's fouled on the way up. The shot's no good, but Julian Rishwain's going to take the first two free throw attempts for UNLV in the 24 season. And for a guy like Julian Rishwain, he, he, his experience, in, it, it just showed in that situation. Four years at San Francisco, one year at Florida, even though it was injury-laden. Uh, for him, knock down his first two threes. You know you're going to have guys closing at you long, running off that line. Shot fake, get to the basket. Now the game's going to open up for him. And again, that's what the Rebels have to rely on, is make sure they take what the defense gives you. You don't have to force it. Just take what they give you and make the next play the smart play. 
Rishwain drains the first one. Rebels trail 19-18. Rishwain has been a part of some winning teams. In fact, the last three years between San Fran and Florida, his teams have won 20 or more games. Second shot, no good off the back of the iron. Madlock with the rebound. He puts the foot on the gas and drives the other way. Goes up and under, and his outlet pass is tipped away by Jace Whiting. Here comes Rich Wayne. He turns it over. Simpson swings it down low for Alabama State. The pass into the paint is to Madlock, and an uncontested lay-in extends the Alabama State lead as they speed up the Rebels. 21-18 with 12 minutes to go in the first half. This has been a dog fight to this point as Whiting gives Dave Dedon Thomas a break. And brings it up on the far side. Fouled away from the ball was Jalen Hill. That's going to go against Dante Bass, who was the top scorer in the first two games last year for Alabama State before a season-ending injury. Under 12 timeouts, sees the clock at 11.55 left in the first half. 21-18, the Rebels trail Alabama State here on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. A hard-working EV with more range than any competitor and the potential to take you anywhere. It's Chevy truck season. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. See your Southern Nevada Chevy dealers. Huh. Hey, John. It's Tuesday, and we're still selling lots of cars. That's right, Steph. We know how to make everything super easy. From a customer's arrival, purchasing a new vehicle, or servicing an existing one. John. John. That's right, Steph. In fact, we sell the most cars every day of the week, even on a Tuesday. With 11.55 to go in the first half of the first game of the season, UNLV trails Alabama State 21-18 here in the early stages. Alabama State CT shooting the lights out. in out of 10 from the field. They're a perfect 5 out of 5 from beyond the arc. Yeah, and again, that's one of the things we talked about. Obviously, uh, Coach Jamal Williams had the scout for this game, and that was one of the things he said to me in his office this afternoon is we, we can't allow guys just to catch the shoot. Regardless of who you are, you've got to respect the game. Defensively, the Rebels got to do a better job of getting out to shooters, especially Walker, knock down his last two threes. You don't want to allow them to get comfortable. And then for, for the Rebels on the offensive end, take what, take what the defense is going to give you. Don't press yourselves. Make sure you make the smart play and don't turn it over. Inbounding from the far sideline is Jalen Bedford. He swings it to Jalen Hill in the backcourt. He gets to DJ Thomas, who's checked back in. I was trying to find some offensive rhythm here as the pass upstairs to Hill is knocked away. Here's Amar Knox going coast to coast. And beg your pardon, Deontay Bass slams it home in Alabama State. Now with a five-point lead. Bedford brings it across half court, takes a pick from Jalen Hill to the left, drives all the way to the baseline, his lane attempt is blocked, Bear Cherry there with the rebound, he passes it up at the lane to Jalen Hill, back downstairs to Cherry, pump fake, he lays it in with the right, and the Rebels back within three, 23-20 with 11-20 in the first. And when you compare and contrast Bear Cherry to last year with Caleb uh, Boone in terms of just springy, long, and athletic, Bear, nice, calm, composed in their soft hands, finish up the room. Definitely a uh, different style this eight downstairs for the Rebels. Sean Fulcher dribbles behind the back, gives it upstairs to just Steven Walker, who misses his first three-point attempt. That one off the left side of the iron. Allison Tempo, here's DJ Thomas on the far side, drives it into the paint, and goes up for a layup. He's fouled. The shot's no good off the front of the iron. And with 10.59 to go in the first half, DJ Thomas to the line, trying to take a bite into this 23-20 Alabama State advantage. Deion Thomas Jr. coming off of one of the best seasons for a freshman ever in the history of UNLV, setting the Mountain West Conference freshman record in assists with 174 last year. He led all freshmen nationwide last year in that category. Yeah, and Deion Thomas Jr., in terms of what he can do as a true freshman, you talk about his first game last year against Southern, clearly looked like a, a, a fish out of water. Got pushed around a little bit, was a little bit too physical for him in that game. Like we talked about in the Open, though, he spent a lot of time this summer in the weight room trying to get his body stronger, prepare for the physical play. Um, and as much as we want him, and, and Coach wants him to not have to shoulder the load, at times, he's going to have to be persistent and put his head down and take over and try to get to the paint and finish because that's what he really is. 
his best up. He drains both free throws to make it 23-22. The Rebels going into a soft three-quarter court press. The ball inbounded to Sean Fulcher, who had that last foul called against him. Alabama State now with six fouls as a team here in the half. He gets it across half court, dishes a desperation attempt to Tyler Mack, who tries a tray, but misses short. T.J. Thomas, right place, right time. He'll try to go coast to coast. Drives baseline, hands to Headley, who misses an open layup and fouls a man on the way down. Just Stephen Walker, who grabbed the rebound, knocked to the hardwood. 23-22, Alabama State. UNLV could have taken the lead, but instead a miss followed by a foul by Henley. And I've got an idea we're not going to see too many of those misses there from Jaden Henley in transition. Great find again by Dinon to be able to push the pace, find the cutter to the basket. But it all started with the Rebels with that soft three-quarter defense with the soft trap, but to make them speed up offensively to force that transition opportunity. After Henley's second foul is the team's second. Coming in on the other end, Jalen Bedford fouls Sean Fulcher away from the ball. It's his first and the team's third. Alabama one foul away from putting UNLV in the bonus. They lead 23-22. Here's Dante Bass to inbound from in front of Kevin Kruger on the far side. Gives to Walker. Walker now left side over to Sean Fulcher. Fulcher resets back upstairs. And the catch and fake is Micah Simpson driving. Tries to go around Cherry. He's swatted by Hill. Ball goes out of bounds in the UNLV basket on the baseline beg your pardon. That was a two-fold block from both Cherry and Hill. It doesn't matter who gets as long as somebody gets it. In this case, they both were able to knock that one out of bounds. Again, good team awareness. That's something we're going to see from this team. They spent a lot of time during practice working on that shell defense. They want to make sure that they're not just playing man-to-man, -man, but good, sound team man-to-man -man defense. 11 seconds on the shot clock as Alabama State inbounds. The handoff is to Micah Simpson. He dribbles it out of bounds thanks to the pressure from Jalen Bedford. UNLV starting to turn the tide defensively here. They've got the ball. And again, I think if, if teams remember, if, if fans remember two years ago with this UNLV team, I mean, when they started 12-1, and one, uh, but you had Elijah Parquet, you had Luis Rodriguez, Keyshawn Gilbert. Talk about defensively what they were able to do. They led the country in forced turnovers. This team is, is not built like that, but I think they may be better soundly defensively because of the length, the rangeness that they have, but also the experience and just the grittiness that they have on the perimeter. Las Vegas' is own Deion Thomas Jr. brings it across half court. Hands off to Jalen Hill, who... Looking for a teammate. He'll go left side to Bedford. Bedford drives back up to the top. Dribbles through the legs as he resets it to the left side elbow. Under 10 minutes to play in the half as Brooklyn Hicks takes it on the right side. He goes up, dribbles through the legs, and finishes on a layup. Kissing it off the glass with the right. A 6-0 run for the Rebels. They lead 24-23. That's what you want to see there from Brooklyn Hicks. Being able to make sure he uses his athleticism, his ball handling to get to the paint. Put pressure on that defense. Fulcher trying to cross up Bedford. He goes left side. It's swatted. The lay-in blocked by Jeremiah Cherry. And it's out of bounds on Alabama State. Rebels got the lead back. They look to extend it now as Alabama backs off the press. Again, two possessions in a row. The first one there you see with Jalen Bedford in terms of pressuring the ball, knocking it off the defender, making it go out of bounds, and this time being able to pick up full court, slide his feet, and force that, that offense player to speed up and turn the ball over. There Cherry comes up, sets the pick. D-down with a wide open pass. BK in the corner for the tray. He trains it. Brooklyn X, the Pacific Northwest zone, gives the Rebels a 27-23 advantage. That's fun basketball to watch in terms of when you've got a guy that's so pass-heavy, Deedon Thomas being able to see that defense, draw the defense, and find and spray the shooters. A lot of fun to be able to play with and to watch. 9-0 run for the Rebels. Gives them a four-point lead. Here on the other side, it's Tyler Mack pushing it to Micah Simpson. Simpson on the logo, dribbles left side. Cherry switches off to him defensively. A pass intended for Mario Andrews goes out of bounds off the hands of the junior forward. And it's Rebel ball with nine minutes to play exactly in the first half. A lot of the time, you see teams talk about in terms of just playing together, getting in a rhythm on offense. But right now, what you see the Rebels doing this last three or four possessions, they're really playing on a string together. All five guys, whether it's a pick and roll, with the soft coverage, or with the drop coverage. But on the weak side, they're rotating, they're coming across, they're jamming those rollers. And you're seeing a really, uh, just a, a great performance here defensively, these last four possessions from the Rebels. Talk about the turnovers. UNLV has forced seven of them from Alabama State here in the early goings. They lead by four. Deedon Thomas dribbles it up. Trying to get the Rebels their biggest lead of the night on a 9-0 run. They've made six in the last eight from the field. DJ at the top of the key tries to drive right, and he's fouled. That's going to go against Amar Knox, and that's a costly one. Not only is it the second on Knox, it's the seventh of the half for Alabama State. That puts UNLV to the bonus. That'll put DJ Thomas to the free throw line. DJ last year, a 74% shooter from the charity stripe. He's not known for his three-point touch necessarily, but he led the Rebels in three-point shooting percentage last year, over 36% from distance. Yeah, DJ was a guy that came in again. A lot was expected of him. He, he came in and delivered, and I like to compare in terms of what he did. So like last year in this situation against Southern, that type of play, he got knocked off his spot, turned the ball over, wasn't getting the respect. 
fast forward a year later, gotten bigger, stronger, more comfortable, more savvy with how he plays, able to not only get not knocked off his spot, but to be able to draw that foul and then step up and calmly knock down those shots. A kid that's well-rounded, clearly, Apple doesn't fall far, far from the tree. Dedon Thomas is dead. Great UNLV legend point guard as well. And uh, that played for Coach Tarkanian here. DJ made the first one to give himself a second shot on the one and one. Makes the second as well, an 11 0 run over two minutes, 37 seconds. 29 23, the lead for the Rebels. Alabama State from right to left is CJ Hines. Sprints across half court, slams on the brakes, guarded by Brooklyn Hicks. Uh, after swinging it around, Amar Knox has it, guarded by Whiting. Gale, the give and go, goes around Mario Andrews, tries to get around Cherry and sneaks a layup in off the glass. Cherry just couldn't close in in time. 29-25, UNLV with the lead. Here's Whiting calling a play and slowing down the offense. It's Whiting after two years at Boise State, staying in the Mountain West here at UNLV. Goes around a screen from Cherry, goes up, his layup is redirected. Cherry right place, right time on the rebound. He goes up through some pressure and banks it in. As strong a basket as you'll ever see from Bear Cherry. We're coming down the other way, C.J. Hines going 0-100 to 100 quickly and tries to go baseline to baseline, but he's fouled on the way up. And with 8.02 remaining, Foul called on UNLV. 31-25 game as Rob Whaley Jr. set to check back in for DJ Thomas. That foul going against Bear Chair. That's his first and the team's fourth. Alabama State already has UNLV in the bonus with 17 fouls. And that's a tough spot to put Bear in in terms of transitioning back. And transition defense isn't always after a miss. That time Alabama State be able to take the ball out of the net and push that pressure on the Rebels. They've got to make sure they slow down that ball early in the backcourt. The inbound to Knox from under his own basket. He works it up top to Octave. Mario Andrews on the left side elbow. He pushes it back up top. It's Amar Knox looking to the bench with a play with 10 seconds on the shot clock. He takes a screen from the right. He goes around with Jalen Hill one on one. He fakes left. He gets into the paint. He elevates. He misses everything on the air ball. Rob Whaley Jr. picks it up. Here come the Rebels on a two on one. Hicks to Bedford. The alley oop attempt is too much, and Bedford's pass is knocked out of bounds. That's going to be off Alabama State. Looked like Micah Octave knocked it into his own bench. A two on one opportunity thwarted. And the Rebels holding on with a 31 25 lead. 7.32 to go in the first half of action. Here from the Thomas and Mack Center, it's opening night on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Here's the first customer for Autocar. The Avondross, that's the first day. First one no furniture in the building. Over the last 25 years, Finley Toyota has led the city in new and used car sales. We've had the most victories, the most sponsorships, and we believe the happiest customers. We've made the best memories and lasting friendships from the bottom of our hearts. We love you, Las Vegas! It's our 25th anniversary. Come in and see what makes Finley Toyota so special. Hey, Steph, you know we sold 30 cars on Monday? On a Monday? Yes, a Monday. A Monday. Yes, a Monday. Hmm. I thought we were low on stock. We've literally got tons of cars coming in all week long. Our customers at Finley Toyota can have anything they want. Even on a Monday. Even on a Monday. On any day of the week, we'll do anything to sell you a car. Even on a Monday. Can't choose between watching your favorite Mountain West team on TV or going everywhere else you need to be? With the official Mountain West app, you don't have to. Watch hundreds of Mountain West games and championship events, live or archived, from wherever you are, all for free with the Mountain West app. Available on mobile and connected TV devices. Download the Mountain West app today. UNLV holds on to a 31-25 lead, 7.32 remaining. Here in the first half of play and opening night, our first radio television simulcast of the year, along with Steve Cofield and Curtis Terry. I'm Matt Never, court sign from Thomas and Mack, and CT excited to get these simulcasts underway here on the Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network. All the non-conference games and three of the Mountain West games are going to be our radio and TV simulcasts here in the 2024-2025 year. Yeah, it's going to be something enjoyable for the fans. Not only are we going to be able to deliver them the games, from the radio as well, but now for this non-conference portion as well as three conference games, we'll be able to, to see it as well in the Mount West Network or locally here on Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network. So again, another way just to deliver this great entertainment from UNLV Runner Rebels to the fans in Las Vegas. Inbound goes to Whiting. He pushes it right side to Bedford. Bedford back upstairs to Brooklyn Hicks and 
Trying to extend this six-point lead. It's Bedford dishing downstairs and a one-touch pass to Jalen Hill. Hill double team back out to Bedford. A catch and shoot three from the elbows. No good off the front of the rim. Whaley pulls down the rebound. One pump fake. There's another. He kisses it off the glass with the left. Biggest lead of the night is a 33-25 advantage. On the other end, it's Madlock driving. He elevates over Jace Whiting and drains it from the near side corner on the baseline. Oh, really tough degree of difficulty overall in that shot. Yeah, that's about as good as defense Jace could play right there in that situation. Matlock gets a full head of steam, able to attack. He's able to cut him off, and that's just a really very adept score, able to make a really tough shot. BK at the top of the key over to Whiting. He sets upstairs to Hicks. Hicks swinging it around Bedford. Alabama State in a 3-2 zone defensively. With 10 on the shot clock. Hicks pushes right side to Whiting again, trying to find Hill in the middle, but instead he gives it to Hicks. Hicks catch and shoot from the top of the key. Off the front of the rim, no good. Here's C.J. Hines on the rebound. He pushes the tempo. Drives on the left side of the paint, guarded by Whiting, and a foul called on the lay in attempt. And it's going to go against the former Boise State Bronco. Whiting's first, team's fifth of the half. 6.27 to go, 33-27, the UNLV lead. And I know, I know Coach Kevin Kruger's not going to be pleased with those last two offensive possessions for the Rebels. They, they want to make sure that against that zone, you've got to get the ball out of the middle, you've got to get to the low corner, uh, either to that dunker spot, you've got to get the ball swung. You can't just stay on the perimeter, pass around on the perimeter. It's easy to defend. And in that case, the defense just shifted with them. You settle, take an outside shot, transition the other way for Alabama State. C.J. Hines, the senior guard out of Atlanta, drains the first of the two free throws. Preseason second team, all swag. And his first two seasons at NAIA Faulkner. He was a first team All-American at the NAIA level two years ago. He makes the second of two free throws, giving him a dead pair and dropping the UNLV lead to 33-29. P.J. Thomas checks back into the game. Thomas and Whiting both in for the first time together. It's D.J. on the right side, bringing it across half court, turns around and hands it to Whiting. Holds up two fingers to call the play. Julian Richwain also checking in. He's in the far side corner. He's got the ball now, working around at the top of the key. It's over to Hill. Hill right side to Thomas with 10 on the shot clock. 6.05 in the game clock. He takes the pick from Whaley, gets into the lane, looking for a pass, a bounce pass intended for Hill, is knocked away, and the Alabama State Hornets with six to play in the half, barely by four, bringing it up half court. Madlock goes around Hill, fires up an Aaron shot that's way wide, misses everything, and saving it inbounds is Whiting. Whiting looking cross court, but his pass is intercepted by Hines. Here comes Alabama State, two on one the other way, elevating and hammered on the way up is Mario Andrews. Foul called on Jace Whiting as Andrews crashes into the bottom of the basket. 44 to go in the half, and that was a hard foul in a two-on-one situation. Yeah, it's an uncharacteristic play there for Jace. Obviously, a guy that came from Boise State, played two years up there for the Broncos, and gave the Rebels the fits every time he played them over the last two years. But a very strong point guard, backup point guard, but for him to make that kind of turnover, like that he's trying to advance the ball in transition, get the ball up the court, put pressure on that defense. But you've got to see, like a quarterback, you can't just look at who's guarding. You've got to look at that second layer of defense, that second line of defense. Um, and basically, just floating back there like a safety was able to get that pass picked off and going the other way for Alabama State. Mario Andrews at the free throw line for Alabama State. Makes the first of two after the shooting foul, 33-30. The Rebel advantage, Andrews playing in his first game with Alabama State. Transfer from Sneed State Community College in Arizona. He shot over 71% from the field over two seasons at the JUCO level. 62% free throw shooter as well last year. Pretty respectable for a 6'7", 200-pound center. Playing a lot of four tonight. And he makes the second one, nothing but net. It's a three or two-point lead. And Alabama State goes on a 6 nothing run. 5.40 to go in the half. Here is Jaden Henley out of Jaden Bedford. Bedford brings it up left side, slows it up as soon as he gets to the logo. Looks for DJ instead, drives left side, gives to Richwain. Richwain from the far side corner, drains the tray. Oh, what a shot with pressure in his face from Richwain. If there's anything Julian knows how to do, it's to be able to shoot that ball from the outside and knock down threes. Makes his third here of the ball game. Richwain, 10 points on three of three shooting. And now working it around on the right side is C.J. Hines. He picks up the dribble and needs to find a teammate. Hands off to Tyler Mack, a senior guard out of Warren, Michigan. Back over to Hines. Hines dribbles through the legs. Drive baseline right. Misses on the layup attempt. And Isaiah Cottrell in his first middle of the year pulls down his first board. Here's DJ Thomas pushing the pace. Slows it up as he gives to Bedford. Bedford tries a tray. No good off the back of the iron. Whaley source for the rebound. Bangs down low in the paint. Knocks over a defender. No foul called as he makes the lay in with the right. Physicality at the forefront of this 38 31 Rebel lead. You've got a feel for Alabama State here. I mean, if it's not going to be Rob Whaley Jr., it's going to be Jeremiah Bear Cherry. 
two guys inside with a lot of strength and power just determined to punish this team on the inside. Jerry waits to check in with 4.30 to go in the half. A cross-court pass for Alabama State on the near side. Micah Ogden tries a three-pointer. That's no good as the rebound into the awaiting arms of Rob Whaley, Jr. He's already got three on the night. Gives it to D.J. Thomas. Dribbles to the legs on the right. Passes down to the near side corner. It's Isaiah Cottrell who gives it to D.J. just off to his left. D.J. fakes left twice. Now fakes thrice. He fires up the three-pointer off the front of the iron. Missed as Micah Simpson grabs the rebound. Brings it across half court. And picks up the dribble. Hands off right side. Octave on the pump fake. Drives and forces some contact in the air. A lay-in on the baseline. Charge for the foul on that one is going to be Jalen Hill. That's number seven of the half. Hill rather that's... Dedon Thomas, Whaley, big part on the third try. That's the seventh of the half for the Rebels. They lead 38-31 with 4-1 to go. At the line now, Micah Octave out of Boca Raton, Florida. In 23 of the 29 games that he played in last year. This is his fourth school in five seasons. As he makes the first of the two free throws, cutting the deficit 38-32. Jerry replaces Whaley. We're going to see a lot of them together. We're going to see a lot of them at the five kind of going back and forth. Yeah, I think what we're, what we're going to see is a lot of different combinations with Coach Kevin Cooper. Um, and one thing that he's expressed here, especially the last day and a half, is, is not only the, the number of quality players that they have and the positions that they have and they can be interchangeable, but the fact that they have a lot of depth and a lot of guys that can play multiple positions and a lot of different variations of lineups. Octave misses the second free throw, but Tyler Mack grabs it and chucks it in the bucket. Makes the score 38-34. Now on the other side, Cherry goes to work on Ocon. On the pump fake, he elevates again, lays it in, rolling it around the iron. There, Cherry, going to wait around down low and extending the lead to six. Looking right to left here, it's Alabama State. Max swings down to Octave. Octave drives baseline, rejected by both Cherry and Cottrell. Ball near the UNLV bench, picked up by Dedon Thomas Jr. He comes up to the middle, gets in the paint, spins around, tries to hand off to Cherry, but the pass knocked out of bounds by Obon Okan. And with 3.23 to go in the half, that'll bring us to the under four media timeout. Rebel basketball presented by Finley Chevrolet, and it's UNLV 40, Alabama State 34, here on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Runners on the corner for Judge. That may go over Cedar Avenue. Another steal by Leonard. A poster finished by Kawhi. Wow! Schofield does it. Your new NCAA champion. There's Palmer with the toughest dive in the competition. That should seal it. Wyoming from the nine-yard line. Allen keeps it himself. Touchdown, Cowboys! Let's do this. Introducing Chevy's best lineup of SUVs ever. The rugged, always ready Trailblazer. The first ever Traverse Z71. And the Chevy Trax, starting at $21,495. When it's your time to shine, Chevy's got you. Or current qualified lessees can get this 2024 Equinox LS for around $199 a month. See your Southern Nevada Chevy dealers. Old Trapper Beefs. Energy emergency. UNLV on top of Alabama State here on opening night. 323 to go in the first half of action. And Curtis, looking at the stat sheet, a game high plus 14 for Dedon Thomas Jr. When he's been on the floor, the Rebels have gone on a couple different runs. That's what you're going to see a lot of. I mean, it, it goes without saying in terms of what Dedon means to this team. Uh, the, the, the one ace in the hole that they have is they do have Jace Whiting Campbell able to come off the bench to give them some backup point guard minutes. Uh, but this team's going to go as, as far as DJ takes them. And, and for him, he, again, he doesn't have to do it all offensively. He can penetrate, he can drive, he can dish, he can run the show, push and be aggressive when he needs to, pull back when he needs to. But more importantly, he's going to have to be the guy that drives this offense. He's going to inbound from underneath his own basket. And dishes way upstairs to Jalen Bedford. The Rebels with the ball again, winding down to the end of the first half. The handoff goes on the left side to DJ Thomas. Thomas goes around a cherry screen, steps back at the free throw line, and on the floor, a foul call before he can get the shot attempt off. 
Foul on the floor goes against Micah Simpson. That's number eight for Alabama State. DJ to the line for a one and one. We've seen a ton of free throw shooting overall here in the early stages. We've seen a ton of outside looks from both teams. They really let it rip from down, uh, downtown so far tonight. Yeah, and, and good thing for the Rebels that they've been able to step up and they've been able to knock down 50% of the threes, 5 of 10. Uh, but bad thing on the flip side because Alabama State so far knocked down 5 of 8. And, and we talked about it, keys of the game from the open. You've got to make sure you get out. You've got to put up a hand. Uh, because you don't want to give them confidence because the longer you give them confidence allow them to stick in the game They think they have a chance, but again, this is the first game out for the rebels against a different opponent They're trying to figure each other out But it's going to kind of be a war of attrition so you can outlast the other the longest to make the right adjustments DJ makes them both Maybe the first one to get the second one. He's now six of six from the line So 42 34 advantage Alabama State has it in the hands of CJ Hines haven't seen a ton of TJ Madlock tonight Hines bounds all caught down low He tries to lay in and it rolls around the back of the rim a foul call to the way up Kevin Kruger incredulous. We're going to call the goaltend anyway. There were two Rebels trying to knock it out of there, including Isaiah Cottrell, and it looks like they got a hand on it while it was in the circle. And as good as the Rebels have been defensively against their pick and rolls and not allowing straight line drives to the basket, that's really the first time that they did not be able to stop that ball and get the weak side guy engaged to pick up that roll man down the lane. O'Connor was able to get it and basically lay it in, but had to, they had to physically knock it out of the rim to stop the ball from going through. And while the lay-in, or the goaltend rather, does make the bucket count, D.J. Thomas brought it up on the other end and was fouled by Simpson. That's his second. Alabama State's ninth of the half. Thomas to the line for another one for one and one. He's had an opportunity to make all three of these tonight. D.J. Thomas put, adding about 15 pounds, we were told, of muscle in the offseason. He's a guy who should be in his true freshman year of college. He misses the first free throw. Ocon able to grab it, all seven foot one of them, and head off to Madlock, who just checked back into the game. Rebels on top by six. Madlock barks out the offense. Goes around Bedford, thanks to the Ocon screen to the right. He's matched up on Bear Cherry on the mismatch. He swings left side to Hines. Hines drives around. Goes over DJ Thomas on the left side. And then layup no good. Bear Cherry knocks the follow up away from Ocon. Here's Bedford on the far side. Rebels with some tempo. They'll slow things up with a six point lead. 2.25 to go in the half. Bedford pushes it right side to Rishwain. Rishwain drives left. Now on the baseline, picks up the dribble. He gets it up top to Bedford. Bedford on the right elbow, going to work on Madlock. Fakes left, goes right. A runner from the baseline. Stuck on the short, short side of the iron. And Madlock turns it up quickly, pushing it up the floor from right to left. He goes cross court. Far side pass to Tyler Mack. A three-point attempt, no good. So in for the board is Isaiah Cottrell. Two minutes to play. Rebels lead by six here on opening night. It's going to be important for the Rebels here to try to close this two minutes of this half strong. Try to make sure you clamp up defensively again. You've got to get back to getting some good looks on offense. We'll try to have some long possessions here as DJ slows it up. He drives right side, gives to Bear Cherry. Cherry with nobody in front of him. Drops it in the bucket. 44, 36 the lead. Just big, soft hands. I mean, you almost think kind of like Winnie the Pooh. Just, just <laughs> trying, to get to, trying to get to the honey. But again, Bear Cherry does a great job. Catches it, finishes high. Soft finish. That's exactly why they call him Bear, right? <laughs> I would guess so. 90 seconds in the half. Rebels on top by eight. Going right now to the top of C.J. Hines. He gives to Madlock. Madlock pushes once more to Mack. Mack on the left side, guarded by Richwing. They go back up to the top of the key and pass to Hines. Hines right side looking for a pass. DJ comes out to guard him. Five on the shot clock. Hines tries to drive. Pulls up for the baseline on the far side. Misses it off the front of the iron. And on the rebound, Dante Bass grabs it, but he stepped out of bounds. So the turnover gives the Rebels the ball with a minute eight to play. On top by eight here on our first TV radio simulcast of the season. And they'll be likely to slow things down here as DJ takes the inbound and calls out a play before he gets to half court. He'll send Rishwain in motion from near side to far on the baseline. Terry comes out to set the screen. Thomas, a pull up three. No good, back to the rim. Ocon over everybody for the rebound with 50 seconds left in the half. Pushing it up on the right side is C.J. Hines. Stops as Bedford gets in his face. Takes the Ocon screen left. Now spins back around to the right. He's got inside leverage, but Bear Cherry comes out. On the long pass to Bass on the far side. He misses on the three, but he's fouled by Cottrell. His first in the team's eighth of the half. Cottrell pulls out just a bit too late on the shooter, Bass. Yeah, it's a bit too late and, uh, and, and a lot of bit out of control. I know that's one thing that's going to that's gonna drive the coaching staff crazy. They spent a good significant chunk of, of practice yesterday, probably like 10 to 12 minutes, specifically closing out to shooters, chopping their steps, not jumping to contest shots, closing with high hands and not fouling shooters. Something they did a lot of last year, and that's not what they want to do. You've got to make sure you close out under control and not give them a chance at three free ones. 
Bass makes the first of the free throws, 44-37, with just under 38 seconds to play. Evan Kruger joins Steve Cofield as soon as the half wraps up. Our halftime show also coming up for our radio audience here from the Thomas and Max Center. Second of the three free throws falls. And Kevin Kruger calls a timeout with 38 seconds to go. It's 44-38, and Kevin wants to talk things over with his team. Now here in these opening night games, CT, you see a couple different theories. You get these teams, uh, you know, the big boys, so to speak, scheduling these preseason top 10 matchups. You've got teams that schedule the bounty, but then you've got teams where they, they, they call pay games. you got these teams that will go just about anywhere, like Alabama State. We talked about it in the pregame show. Those are the teams you almost always have to watch out for because they come in hungry early. Yeah, it's kind of a slippery slope. You've got to make sure that you go out and get a good quality opponent for your home opener or for a non-conference game. Uh, but, and like last year, unfortunately, Rebels, they had Southern come into town. I uh, thought it was going to be a win they'd be able to get. All ultimately didn't turn out that way. Team speed game, they got blown out of and, and gave up a lot of shots. They kind of set an early tone for the season. Uh, but in this case, something unique for the Rebels. You classify them as a mid-major, one of the top teams in the Mountain West Conference and a national brand, but they have a lot of hard time scheduling quality opponents to come here, especially this part of the season. You don't always want to go on the road, but it's a good problem to have kind of good and bad with the Rebels. they got to make sure the opponents that they do get to play, they've got to make sure they take advantage of those opportunities, especially in games like this when you do have to say, hey. Out of the timeout, Dante Bass with a left-hand release. Nothing but net on the free throw to make it 44-39. He'll head to the bench. Checking in in his place is Micah Octave. This lead by five. This could be the last possession of the half. A seven-second difference between game and shot clock. Bedford on the right side brings it across half court. Gives to DJ on the logo at half court. He calls out the offense with 16 seconds on the shot clock. Rebels standing. And now as DJ dribbles slowly to the left side, they go into motion. The trail drops downstairs. Here comes Cherry on a pick to the top. DJ takes it right. He's matched up on Ocon. 7-2 on six feet tall. DJ drives left, elevates with a runner from the left side of the free throw line. The shot's no good, but Ocon called on the foul. And with 10 and a half seconds to go. It'll be DJ Thomas to the line after 10 team fouls for Alabama State. Puts UNLV into the double bonus. And, and DJ's just so savvy. Uh, obviously, he, he should, like you said, he should be a true freshman this year. Reclassified to graduate early to come to UNLV last year. But for him, he's just so savvy. He's not the quickest guy. Obviously not the biggest buy guy, but a guy that just knows how to get to his spots, how to rock his defender to sleep, and be able to get that advantage to turn that corner. But then very crafty being able to draw those fouls and get those opportunities. That's how he just got to the line right now. Good free throw shooter as well. He makes the first of two to go to seven of eight from the line. He's got nine points and four assists as well. Brooklyn Hicks comes in in place of Isaiah Cottrell. With the shot clock turned off, DJ drains the second one. And it's now a 46-39 Rebel lead. With 10 seconds to go in the half. Here comes C.J. Hines working it quickly. He brings it across half court. And Tony Madlock on the sideline furiously calls the timeout with 7.5 to play. So the Rebels here at half number one definitely with some improvements to be made, C.T., but two of the things you can't argue, the shot selection and the free throw shoot. Yeah, the Rebels have done a great job of making sure that they, they try to get the shots that they want. They haven't had too many possessions where they forced shots or taken bad shots. Um, and they're doing a great job of getting to the line, especially Deion Thomas. The one thing on the flip side of that, when you're taking a look at it, they've got to make sure they do a better job of running these guys off the line. We, we talked about it. It was number one on the keys for the game. Coach Jamal Williams harped on it. So did Coach Kevin Kruger. You don't want to allow catch-and-shoot threes, regardless if the team can shoot or they can't shoot. If they get open looks, their basketball players are going to gain confidence. That's the one area they can clean up is make sure they get out to shooters and make this team put it on the floor and make that second, third play out of their attack. Alabama State picked to finish 6 out of 12 in the preseason SWAC Bowl. They've shown some good fight tonight. On the inbound from the near side, Octave. Inbounds to Okong at the top of the key. He pushes it right side to Madlock. Madlock trying to get around Bedford. A pull-up jumper from just beyond the free throw line on the right is no good. The follow-up is good, or no good, rather. And they're going to take a look as the third shot attempt fell. And they're going to count it. 46-41. The score at the half with UNLV on top of Alabama State. And we'll wait for Kevin Kruger to get over and talk to Steve Cofield. Really interested to hear uh, what Coach Cooper's got to say uh, about half number one in this game. Always interested to hear what any coach has to say about their first half. 46-41, the Rebel halftime lead. UNLV led in scoring at half number one by Bear Cherry. A perfect six of six from the field with the two of 12 points. Deion Thomas Jr. with 10 points. Eight of those points coming from the free throw line. 
18 and game high four assists. As the Rebels will start the ball with the second half, coming out with the same starting five as in half number one. It's Hill, Henley, Thomas, Bedford, and Jeremiah Bear. Cherry Rebels going from right to left to start half number two at the five point lead. It's Henley on the left side, guarded by Hines, looking for a pass. He goes upstairs to Bear Cherry. He turns, hands off. It's Bedford from the right side elbow. He trains a three to extend the Rebel lead. 49 41 to start the second half. Again, having a guy like Jalen Hill be able to look for that high low from Big Bear uh, just gives the defense some respect, but then you can dribble hand off to Bedford for the knockdown three. Hornets put up a good fight in this first half. Now in the second half, it's Matlock dumping downstairs to Okong. He elevates over Bear Cherry, who tried to swat it and lay it off the glass. Makes it 49-43. DJ going from right to left. He's on the far side in front of his head coach, Kevin Kruger. Goes around a Cherry screen. Looks for Bedford, who goes around the outside. He dumps it down low in the far side corner to Bear Cherry. Puts it on the floor. Spins around Okong. His shot no good. Not enough on it. As it bounces short off the rim, here is Micah Octon pushing it all the way up to Amar Knox. Knox from the right side will try a drive. Had to go over top of Bear Cherry, but he's fouled on the lay-in attempt on the baseline. And with 18.59 to go in the contest, Bear Cherry picks up his second foul, first of the half for either side. Here he just closing in a little too aggressively, maybe a little late on Amar Knox as well. Who had originally committed to Memphis out of high school. He's a redshirt sophomore in his third season with Alabama State. And speaking of Memphis, obviously we've got the Memphis Tigers and Coach Penny Hardaway coming into Thomas and Mack here on Saturday. Uh, and when you, when you think about it, Coach Tony Madlock used to be a former assistant for Penny Hardaway at Memphis. So again, a, a, a long line for, for him from coaching. Obviously you've got Knox here now, but some, some ties to this Memphis team that the Rebels are going to look at here come Saturday afternoon. After missing the first of two free throws, Knox with the right hand release frames the second one. The free throw makes it 49-44 UNLV. Alabama State in a soft full court press. DJ to Bedford. Bedford on the right side. Breaks the time stripe. And goes by TJ Madlock. He picks up his dribble. He's double teamed on the trap. Desperately looking for a pass. He spins. It gives to Henley. Henley bounces down low to Cherry. His dunk is good. He's fouled by Ocon. A chance for a three-point play for Bear Cherry. And the Rebels lead 51-44. Great job there by the Rebels to be able to absorb that full court 2-2-1 press. Get it across half court. Jalen Bedford dri dribbles into that trap, but doesn't panic. Pivots two or three times and able to find Jaden Henley, who then, who's then has the, the wherewithal to be able to get that high-low pass down to Big Bear. And, of course, Bear, soft hands, finishes at the rim, get a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. Ocon to the bench with three fouls. And Cherry from the free throw line. This is off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Octave and Alabama State. It goes from left to right. Matlock double teamed by Hill and Bedford. He's able to get it back upstairs. And the reset is to Matlock on the right side elbow. Guarded by Hill. One hand pass to Octave at the top of the key. Octave goes left, hands off to Knox. DJ Thomas guarding him in front of the Alabama State bench. Knox takes his screen. He pitches it back up, left side elbow. Octave on the pump fake. Now we'll try a shot. Hill drain it on a three pointer. Beautiful looking shot through pressure for Micah Octave out of Boca Raton, Florida. Another knockdown three there for the Hornets. Obviously, they, they cooled off in the first half when they started 5 of 5, missed their next four, but a big three for them to be able to step up and knock down. The Rebels got to do a better job staying home. On the other end, here's DJ in the far side corner, bounces baseline to Cherry. He dribbles twice, he pump fakes once, he goes up on a lay in, he's fouled as he misses just Steven Walker. Guilty party with the second foul of the half. The second of the game for just Stephen Walker, 51-47 with 17.59 to go. This is an opportunity here for Bear Cherry to not only slow the game down, but add to his total. Last year at New Mexico Junior College, he was a 62% free throw shooter. Coming into this year, after being regarded as one of the top Juco forwards in the transfer portal in the country. First of two free throws goes. Cherry averaging 12.5 and, and 7 at the junior college level last year. Yeah, and, and Bears, he's a throwback big, right? I mean, in terms of a guy that wants to be able to catch in the paint, play with his back to the basket, nice, slow, and methodical to finish over either hand, and we talked about his soft touch around the basket. But uh, unlike Rebel teams of, of years past, you haven't had a low post score, but to be able to have him, it can really change the flow of the game, change the pace, and let you control it a lot more and dictate. Second shot, clangs off the iron, no good. The lead stays at five. Under 18 to go is Alabama State, pushing it up on the other end. Now some desperation. Here's Madlock finding highs on the left side elbow. He turns and fires over to Octave from in front of his own bench. A three-pointer misses short. And right place, right time on the rebound is Jalen Bedford. He's going to bring it across the time stripe himself. Directing traffic. He'll send Jalen Hill down the baseline. Looking for Bear Cherry on a bounce pass. 
And a little bit too much on it. Jerry saying to Bedford afterwards, hey, we got to communicate a little bit there. Yeah, and Bedford's got to do a better job. Like, if I'm going to make that post entry pass, you've got to try to get below the free throw line extended, but you've got to get sure you get a better angle because Bear wants to make sure he's anchored with that foot on the block or foot in the paint to be able to attack. Amar Knox on the other side gives to just Stephen Walker, the three pointer from the top of the key. Misses high. Madlock are able to grab the rebound. And he goes into the paint, falls down on a jump ball call as he was competing with Jalen Hill. Possession arrow favors the Hornets. So it'll stay with Alabama State with 18 on the shot clock. Julian Rishwain into the game. Jalen Hill to the bench. Rishwain in that first half. Ten points. Three out of three from the field and the free, -pointer, free throw make. Guarding defensively as the inbound goes to Hines. Rishwain at 6'9", a full half a foot taller. And the guard Hines tries to get around him to the right with seven on the shot clock. He fakes left. Now drives right down the baseline. Soars over Richwain and misses off the iron. So it resets the shot clock. It's back out to a Marnox on the right side. He'll drive. Throw up a mid-range floater that misses. And a foul called on the floor on the rebound. It was Jaden Henley and just Stephen Walker going at it. And the foul is going to go against Walker. Alabama State certain it was against Henley. And a couple of players went to the same baseline spot. The Rebels were able to dodge one there in terms of not giving up uh, a second chance basket after giving up two offensive uh, rebounds and two back to back possessions. DJ drives. He dishes out right side of Rishwain. Rishwain on the pump fake. Pulls up from in front of his own bench for three. No good. Soaring for the rebound. And the putback is Jaden Henley. What athleticism on display. 54 47 the lead now for UNLV. Henley. Nice 40-inch vertical on that one. And you talk about a guy about Jaden Henley, a guy where typically we get transfers are typically here for maybe one year unless something crazy happens. But this is a guy who's a true junior, going to have at least two years, hopefully, for the Rebels. Hines slows it up on the other side. He'll try a three himself. That's no good off the front of the rim. Able to pull down the rebound is Jalen Bedford. He slows it down, now speeds it up, and as he gets into the lane, is hammered by C.J. Hines. Hines put a shoulder into him as Bedford went to the floor. Now head to the bench as Alabama State has picked up their fourth foul of the second half. That's the second on Hines of the game. And that's that's a prime example of what Coach Kevin likes about his depth. Not, it doesn't have to be Deion Thomas bringing the ball up. You've got Jace Whiting, and you've got Brooklyn Hicks, but you've also got a guy like Jalen Bedford who has experience at Division One level that can be able to be that second point guard even on the court for a backup situation. Um, if for some reason the Deedon has to take a beat. Hicks, Rishwain, Henley, and Cherry awaiting the inbound pass from Deedon Thomas Jr. under his own basket. He gives out to Rishwain on the right side elbow. Here comes DJ. He's got it at the top of the key. Tries to drive around left side. And as he got into the paint at the top of the key, he is crushed. He goes down to the floor in a heat near the baseline. That's foul number five for Alabama State, number one for Madlock. So DJ Thomas, who is... A lot of times, CT, the smallest player on the floor for both sides, as fearless as it comes in NCAA basketball. Yeah, it's been like that since day one, and we keep harping on it, but a guy that reclassified should be a true freshman now. This is his second year, reclassified to be able to come in a year early to take over the range for the Rebels in the point guard position. But a kid that's fearless is able to take it inside and doesn't mind making that contact and finishing. Inbounds to Cherry. Cherry gives back to Thomas, and on the layup attempt, he is fouled. Little give and go there between the one and the five. Don't see it too often. The Rebels will have a pair of free throws coming up on the other side of the under-16 timeout. 15-57 to play, 54-47 the Rebel lead. This is the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Gatorade, the world's most superior sports drink. Designed to rehydrate, replenish, and refuel. It fuels the best because it is the best. Gatorade, is it in you? Gatorade. The world's most superior sports drink, designed to rehydrate, replenish, and refuel. It fuels the best because it is the best. Gatorade, is it in you? The holidays. And holiday trips. And holiday toys. And holiday bonding. And it all comes together in a Chevrolet. Find your red tag. Get 1.9% financing on all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Plus, get 37.50 total value on this Silverado when you trade in an eligible vehicle. See your Southern Nevada Chevy dealers. Go ahead, 
live your best life. You're not already a part of Boyd Rewards. They invite you to experience life rewarding and joining the loyalty program that leads you to nine destinations here in Las Vegas as well as across the country. UNLV basketball also presented by Southern Nevada Chevy dealers with impressive towing, incredible bed and tailgate functionality. Powerful engines as well, Chevy Silverado, Colorado and Tahoe. That's what you need to get things done when you want to do it all. Chevy's got you. See your Southern Nevada Chevy dealer. Along with Steve Cofield and Curtis Terry, Matt Everett here from the Thomas and Mack Center, opening night of the 2024-25 UNLV Run and Rebels season. And right now, the Rebels leading 54-47 over Alabama State out of the swag. Rebels holding on to this lead CT here to start the second half. And Julian, or indeed on Thomas, rather, go to the line and try and extend it. That's kind of what they've been able to do since the halftime break, extend that lead slowly. Yeah, and it, it's starting, obviously, on the defensive end. I mean, the Rebels allowed Alabama State to come out of the gates going 8 for 10 from the floor. Obviously, they knocked on a handful of threes, but so far here through the first five, five minutes of the second, uh, four and a half minutes of the second second half, two of seven from the field is Alabama, 28%. So the Rebels doing a much better job defensively, but then offensively, they're pounding it inside to Jeremiah Bear Cherry, and then they, again, allowing Deedon Thomas to kind of operate in space. And again, he's back to the free throw line as he just knocks down a pair. He makes both of them, and UNLV with their largest lead of the night, 56-47, with just under 16 minutes to play. T.J. Madlock, who is starting his 95th game of college basketball, brings it up the floor. The son of head coach Tony Madlock. He's got it again on the give and go on the right side. He gets around the left as he goes around Brooklyn Hicks. He stops, resets, desperately looking for a pass. He gets it around a teammate to C.J. Hines. Hines tries to drive around Wishway, but he's stymied. Has to get it back up top to Knox. Five on the shot clock. He dribble drives around Jaden Henley. Fires up a wild lay, and that's nowhere close. Henley grabs the board, goes cross court on the pass to Hicks. Hicks from the right side, spins left. Oh! On the baseline, misses on the lay-in, but Richwin grabs the board. Gives back to DJ. DJ, right side to Henley. Henley into the paint, a no-look bounce pass. Intended for Hicks, goes out of bounds. Hicks was in the right place, but Henley couldn't get it to him. And the ball goes the way of Alabama State. You like Henley not settling there for the outside shot, putting the ball on the deck, getting to the paint, but that pass came a little hot there for Brooklyn to handle through traffic. C.J. Hines brings it up. Two points. 0 for 5 shooting. He's made two free throws. He goes left side of Knox. Knox back to Hines. Hines will drive to the right. He gets to the baseline. Hicks and Whaley right there as so he passes back upstairs. Octave on the left side with the runner. Drains it. Nothing but Ned on an awkward mid-range shot. 56-49, the UNLV lead. DJ Thomas with a... 12-point performance to this four on 10 free throw makes. He drives, gives it back out to Henley. Henley off the glass from the right side of the lane, and he drops it. Beautiful mid-range touch back and forth, and the lead back to nine. And Locke, meanwhile, quickly pushes it up to Octave. Octave from the right side. This is everything. An air ball goes off the glass, and here's Brooklyn Hicks. He grabs the rebound. He goes coast to coast, and he's crushed on the way up. Hicks is going to go to the free throw line. And that was a hard purpose foul, so they say, from... Going to call it on C.J. Hines. Could have called it on Micah Octave as well as Hicks with no fear took it in between three Hornets. It was Hines that got him from behind on his third foul of the game in the seventh of the half for the Hornets. You talk about that guy. That's a guy that's not just a natural competitor, but a guy that's a true athlete. I had a chance to sit with uh, Brooklyn at lunch here this afternoon after after shoot around. He's a guy that not only is a basketball player, great kid, but he he was a track star in high school as well, coming out of Washington. So it's a kid that's got breakaway speed. You clearly see it. You see the vertical. But a guy that can really do it all on the floor just because of purely based on that athleticism along with the skill set of the basketball. This is the first of two free throws. Another reason you like him, CT, he's a Pacific Northwest guy. You know, it's it's hard to find guys from Pacific Northwest that I don't like. Um, <laughs> from top to bottom, we're all pretty good guys. I think we all have our flaws here and there, but well, Brooklyn's one of the good ones for sure. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> got a, a Seattle native, and it's a Coma native. Went back and forth saying nice things. Second free throw, no good. Brooklyn Hicks misses them both. He was a 52% free throw shooter last year. Alabama State working quickly down the other way. Simpson tries to drive baseline, and he's blocked by Rob Whaley. He gives to Whiting. Whiting goes cross court to Hicks. He catches it and lays it in underneath the basket with the left. There's the play in for BK. And again, another prime example of that breakaway speed for Brooklyn to be able to get behind that defense. Right, breakaway speed the other way as TJ Matlock takes a full court pass, goes up with the right hand, and misses. And he was influenced by Jaden Henley, who's called for the foul. Both teams really pushing the tempo here. As that foul going to be the second of the half for UNLV. And for Henley, that's going to be number three. 
to the line now, T.J. Madlock. He's played over 1,000 minutes and 95 games in his college career. He's as durable as it comes. His first free throw drop drops, and it's 60-50 to 50 with Bedford replacing Jaden Henley. These J names starting to jumble in the second half. And, and we're only halfway through the, for the first game of the season. I think it's going to get a little bit, a little murky as we move forward in this league. As Matlock makes the second of two, a timeout called. It'll be a full timeout with 14.08 to play. Six, with 14.08 to go, it's 60 to 51 UNLV here on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. With Chevy Trucks, be ready truck season. Get 0% financing, plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. See your Southern Nevada Chevy dealers. Huh. Hey, John. It's Tuesday, and we're still selling lots of cars. That's right, Steph. We know how to make everything super easy. From a customer's arrival, purchasing a new vehicle, or servicing an existing one. John. John. That's right, Steph. In fact, we sell the most cars every day of the week, even on a Tuesday. Here's the first customer that bought a car. The Avondross, that's the first day. First one no furniture in the building. Over the last 25 years, Finley Toyota has led the city in new and used car sales. We've had the most victories, the most sponsorships, and we believe the happiest customers. We've made the best memories and lasting friendships from the bottom of our hearts. We love you, Las Vegas! It's our 25th anniversary. Come in and see what makes Finley Toyota so special. Rebels lead the Hornets 60-51 with 14.08 to play in the opening night game. Now send it down to the sideline. Check in with Steve Cofield. Well, Brooke Hicks is back out there again. And, you know, when he went in for his first stint here in the second half, Kevin, Kevin Kruger simply said to him, just run the floor. I think he wants Brooklyn to run the floor, but also set an example for everyone else. And, man, Hicks, for people last year to notice, his rise in the second half of the season, he was overshadowed by fellow freshman D. Don Thomas. Man, Brooklyn Hicks brings so much energy to the floor, and I think he's more confident now on offense, too. So keep an eye on him and see what he can do on both ends for the next couple minutes. Now, thank you, Steve. Chase winding into the game as J. Thomas goes to the bench, going back and forth with Rich Wayne at the top of the keys, the former Bronco. He fakes right now, goes left. There's Brooklyn Hicks throwing a shoulder into a defender. He feeds Rich Wayne. Rich Wayne's three-pointer from the right side. Elbow ropes in and out. Brooklyn pulls down the rebound as he slides to the floor. He goes out of bounds by a shoelace. Got to love the effort there from Brooklyn Hicks, but the ball is turned over to Alabama State. And to Steve's point, like Coach Kevin Kruger said, run the floor, play hard, bring the energy. That's the thing that Brooklyn Hicks, that's kind of his innate skill set right there, playing hard energy. Uh, he can do a lot when he gets the opportunity, but right now that's kind of the role he's going to have to fill here early in the season. Alabama State trails by nine with just over 13 and a half minutes to play. Motion offense at the top of the key. Sees it with Amar Knox dribbling to the right side. Takes the screen from Mario Andrews. He goes way deep by the free throw line. Now drives downstairs. Throws it up over Whaley and his layup attempt loops in and then out. Rebels coming down the other way. It's Whiting on the far side corner in front of his own bench. Gets it into the paint near the free throw line. Gives to Rishwain. Rishwain pushes right to Bedford. Bedford going to work on Matlock. It's Rishway now. Whiting at the top of the key with 15 on the shot clock. Fakes left. Goes right. Picks up his dribble. Gives to Rishway. He'll try a drive. Nowhere to go for him. It's the former Florida Gator. Gives back upstairs to Whiting. Now with five on the shot clock. He'll try to drive to the left. He spins right. Goes up with the pump fake. Goes up with the left and misses. Hit it off the back of the iron. And it's going to go out of bounds around Dante Bass. And the Hornets are going to maintain possession with 12.58 to go. And again, it hasn't been the easiest going here so far for Jace Whitting on his view and be running Rebel debut. But he's a guy that we're going to expect a lot of this season. Coach Kevin Kruger said he's a guy that comes from, obviously, Boise State, has experience in the Mountain West. But just a solid all-around player, and especially at that point guard position, brings experience, toughness, and being a Boise State Bronco, he knows how to win. Knox slows it up, gets around Brooklyn Hicks. Now pushes left side to Bass. He'll try a tray that falls. Dante Bass from in front of his own bench makes it from three-point range. It's 60-54, UNLV with 12 and a half minutes to go. And the Rebels have done a very good job here. Obviously, Alabama State started the game 5-of-5 five five from three until that last one. They were 1-of-9, now 2 of their last 10. But they don't want to allow them to get hot because that's the only way they were in this game in the beginning. Hornets into a 2-3 zone. Richman from the right elbow finds Bedford in the near side corner. His three-point attempt balls wide open. And nothing but net for Bedford. 
12 minutes to play. Amar Knox and the Alabama State Hornets trail UNLV 63 to 54. He goes up to the top of the key and gives to Madlock. Madlock barks out the offense before swinging right to Simpson. Simpson bounces it to Matlock in the corner. He gets it back upstairs from way downtown. Simpson for three, misses everything off the left side of the glass. Down to the floor is Andrews on the tie-up. And a jump ball called as Julian Richway was trying to wrestle it away from him as well. Possession arrow favors UNLV. And with under 12 minutes to play, both sides head to the bench for the media timeout. 11.48 left in the opening day game. Rebels on top by nine. UNLV 63, Alabama State 54. Back with more on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Steph, you know we sold 30 cars on Monday? On a Monday? Yes, a Monday. A Monday. Yes, a Monday. Hmm. I thought we were low on stock. We've literally got tons of cars coming in all week long. Our customers at Finley Toyota can have anything they want. Even on a Monday. Even on a Monday. On any day of the week, we'll do anything to sell you a car. Even on a Monday. Can't choose between watching your favorite Mountain West team on TV or going everywhere else you need to be? With the official Mountain West app, you don't have to. Watch hundreds of Mountain West games and championship events, live or archived, from wherever you are, all for free with the Mountain West app. Available on mobile and connected TV devices. Download the Mountain West app today. Runners on the corner for Judge. That may go over Cedar Avenue. Another steal by Leonard. A poster finished by Kawhi. Wow! Schofield does it. Your new NCAA champion. Here's Palmer with the toughest dive in the competition. That should seal it. Wyoming from the nine-yard line. Allen keeps it himself. Touchdown, Cowboys! Rebels holding on to a nine-point lead with 11.48 to play here in the opening day game. Next matchup coming up this Saturday as the Memphis Tigers come to the Thomas and Mack Center. It'll be a doubleheader as our matchup between UNLV and Memphis, the precursor to a football matchup between the UNLV Rebels led by Barry Odom and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. UNLV come games. A really, really fun atmosphere here on campus CT as the football and basketball teams merge. Football team been really fun to watch, and the basketball team looks to pick up the progress. You know, obviously UNLV has been known for being a basketball school, but what Coach Barry Odom has done uh, with the guys on the football field over at the Fertitta Complex and Allegiant Stadium just gets a lot of buzz started here when you start the school year here in August. But now with them rolling, you get the Rebels, and what, obviously what Coach Lindley Rock has done with the Lady Rebels, it's a great time to be a Rebel. Uh, just here's a more continued success for UNLV Athletics. 63-54, the run Rebels on top as Jake Whiting brings it across half court and slows it down going from right to left. Goes right side to Hicks, back upstairs to Bedford. Bedford over to Whiting on the left side, You're trying to get around this Alabama State zone defense. Eight seconds on the shot clock as Hicks grabs it, one-hand pass over to Bedford. Bedford dribbles through the legs, tries to drive right, pulls up from just inside the three-point line, misses off in front of the rim, a battle for the board, and Dante Bass, big number zero for Alabama State, yanks it away and turns it the other direction. Giving it to Amar Knox. He'll go driving down the left side. He resets back up to the top of the key. But Dante Bass hanging out on the other wing. He looks to the bench and gets the side from the third-year head coach, Tony Madlock. He pushes it to his son. It's TJ Madlock. Goes right side. Right side. And now hands to Mack. Mack up to the top of the key. Rebels not allowing any penetration here. Knox directing traffic. Drives left. Goes one-on-one -on -one with Rishwain. Fires from three-point range. Hits nothing but the bottom of the net on the outside of the basket. An air ball gives the Rebels the advantage with 10.40 to go. D.J. Thomas awaiting the check-in. Likely for Jace Whiting, who's standing on the logo now, directing this UNLV offense. He brought out the play, gives to Rishwain on the right side. Rishwain holding it above his head. Pushes left side of Bedford. Bedford on the elbow. Gives it into the corner to Whiting. Whiting with eight on the shot clock, dribbling slowly to the top of the key. Bounces to Cherry, standing on the free throw line. Jerry to Rishwain. Rishwain from the right elbow. 4-3. No good. A little too much on it. Okung with three fouls back into the game. Elevating to the board. Alabama State pushing the tempo. Here's Bass on the other end. From the near side corner. Off the top of the rim. No good. Okung pushing a couple of the defenders away. Grabs the rebound, but it's intercepted on the pass out to Whiting. Whiting going one-on-one -on -one with Madlock. He's on the left side. Now back up to the top. Rishwain on the right elbow has the ball now. The skip pass down to Bear Cherry. Physical as he dribbles around Okung. He goes up and he's fouled on the way to the basket. 
Jeremiah Bear Cherry to the free throw line for the third time tonight. He's talking to the officials, he really took a shoulder to the gut. And if, and if he's complaining about getting pushed around, you know that there's got to be a case there to be had and to be listened to because, again, Jeremiah is a big, big boy on the inside. Like you mentioned, they call him Bear for a reason. But if he's getting pushed off his spot and he's complaining, it might be something worth taking a look at. Ubong Okan with his fourth foul of the game. That's number eight on Alabama State here in this half. It's a two free throws, drops for Bear Cherry. As extends the lead to 10 points, 64-54. As DJ checks in as well as Jaden Henley, Rishwain, and Whiting to the bench. So it's Thomas, Henley, Cherry, Hicks, and Bedford on the floor for UNLV. Second of two shots falls, and it's a 65-54 advantage. Rebels with an 11-point lead. Alabama State hasn't scored in over three minutes. Rebels showing a bit of press. They'll now back off as Brooklyn Hicks backpedaling in front of Matlock. Walks him all the way to the half-court stripe before he hands off to Bass. Bass over to Knox. Knox to the top of the key. Here's Jalen Kiago, and he's fouled on the three-point attempt by Bear Cherry. Bear can't believe it as well as the Rebel faithful. First time into the game for Jalen Kiago, the Wisconsin native, who spent his last two seasons at Pensacola State Community College, the 6'6 junior guard, to the free throw line for two shots with 9.38 to go in the contest. It might be the first game of the season, but Coach Kevin Kruger is in mid-season form, letting the rough official know that he does not agree with that call. Big Bear with the closeout. Thought he got the ball first before making contact, but again, Kiago's going to the line to shoot three. He makes the first of them after Bear Cherry is called for his third foul of the game. And sometimes you want to test a guy early in the season, a big man playing with a handful of fouls on him. Yeah, and again, we, we talk about with, with Coach, Coach Kruger what he's got. He, he's got a deep team this year, multiple guys that can play multiple positions, probably the deepest team that he's had in terms of guys that he, he expects to be able to contribute right from the start and having a full, healthy roster from opening night. And so when you step into it from this standpoint, it's like, what can you do? You, we're up we're up nine points right now with nine minutes left in the game. Can you play through, through foul trouble? Can you be smart? Test ourselves right now because, again, the intensity is going to be turned up when you come Saturday with Coach Penny Hardaway and the Memphis Tigers coming to town. After making the first two, Kiago misses the third. 65-56, the lead for UNLV is P.J. Thomas. Goes down this offense, going from right to left here in the second half. Bedford's got it on the left side, now up to Hicks. Hicks at the top of the key, puts the ball on the floor, and gives to D.J. Thomas on the far side in front of his own bench. Slowly dribbling back to the top. He gives to Hicks with four on the shot clock. Hicks pushes down low. Henley elevates over a defender. No good on the air ball. It missed everything. And a shot clock violation will give the ball to the Alabama State Hornets, who have not made a field goal in over three minutes and 40 seconds of game time. 9.07 to go in the second half. It's a nine-point Rebel advantage, and they're into the full-court press. Bout is to Knox. He's got Henley walking him down the court as Brooklyn Hicks chases down Madlock, who inbounded. Coming out to set the screen. Instead, Dante Bass gets it bounced to him. Work back upstairs as Amar Knox drives right back up to the top. Kiago with an NBA range three-pointer from the top of the key. That was way short, way left, and this Thomas and that crowd letting him hear about the air ball. He's out of bounds under the baseline, and that's where the Rebels will take possession. Kiago to the bench for Alabama State. Meanwhile, Rishway replaces Bedford for UNLV. It's just Stephen Walker stepping into the game for the Hornets is Tony Madlock, as you had mentioned, a former assistant of Penny Hardaway's in Memphis, also a former assistant at Ole Miss, Auburn, and UTEP. Julian Rishway gets the pass from DJ Thomas, works it back upstairs to Brooklyn Hicks. Mr. to Thomas on the right side. Thomas gives it down to Henley. Henley over to DJ in front of the own bench. It's Henley. Right by Matlock as DJ elevates for the shot. No good off the back of the rim. And the rebound goes the way of the Hornets as Matlock goes from left to right. Sprinting by DJ Thomas. He pulls up from mid-range on the far side and drops it. 65-58 the score. First make in their last eight shots from the floor for Alabama State. And it's been a rough night for there for, for TJ Matlock. Only his fourth made basket gives him nine points here in the evening. DJ oh. throws it up to Cherry who slams it home on the alley-oop. He cut everybody napping and wakes this crowd up. <laughs> Don't let the bear hibernate. Poke him too soon. He's going to wake up. <laughs> 67-58, the lead with under eight to play. That's great communication, better execution as Cherry sort over a pair of defenders. Matlock slowing things way down as he dribbles to the right. Trying to get around D.J. Thomas. Here comes 
Teammate with the screen, it's Amar Knox. Madlock to the baseline, elevates for the shot and misses off the back of the iron. Bear Cherry goes over to Stephen Walker and pulls down the board. Here comes DJ, dishes down low. Brooklyn finishes with the flurry, a two-hand jam that gives the Rebels a 69-58 lead with 7.28 to go and a timeout on the floor. And Steve called it out. Coach Kruger wanted, wanted Brooklyn to get out in front, in front of the defense, get out in transition. Great job rewarded there with a the breakaway two-hand dunk. The Rebels are running an 11-point lead with 7.28 to go. It's UNLV 69, Alabama State 58 on the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Always ready trailblazer the first ever traverse z71 and the chevy tracks starting at 21495 when it's your time to shine chevy's got you or current qualified lessees can get this 2024 equinox ls for around 199 a month see your southern nevada chevy dealers old trapper beefs energy emergency Old Trapper, what's your beef? Old Trapper Beefs. Tough snacks. Out here, nothing comes easy. That's why you gotta be tough. The truck, it's tough. My crew, definitely tough. But Old Trapper, taught me the value, tenderness. Old Trapper, what's your beef? Oh, it's a puppy. <laughs> An 11 point advantage for UNLV with 7.28 to go. Bear Cherry playing the hammer on a two hand alley oop jam from DJ Thomas before our under eight media timeout. Cherry all of a sudden, CT, with a game high 19 points in his Rebel debut. You're not going to see many, but many runner Rebel debuts in what Bear Cherry has done out here tonight. Eight of nine from the field, three of five from the free throw line, 19 points, seven rebounds so far. Very efficient game, plus 16 and plus minus doing it all for the Rebels. When you talk about how we're going to place Caleb Boone on the inside, well, Big Bear Cherry is your answer. Cherry just brings a little bit more physicality. I say a little, a yeah, lot. A lot a bit more physicality from Bear than what the Rebels have seen in the past from their post players, and that's a good thing. They're going to try to finish this one out as they lead 69-58 against Alabama State with 7.20 and counting to play. Amar Knox goes from left to right and hands off to Mitch Octave. Who gives it back up to Knox, the Memphis native at the top of the key, guarded by Jalen Hill, who's back into the game. Tyler Mack on the catch and shoot, pump fakes it, turns around and hands it to Knox. He'll try the left side corner now. Knox guarded by Rishwain, gets into the paint, spins around, elevates, pump fakes, gets Rishwain off of his feet, throws a shoulder into him, makes the lay-in off the glass, and Rishwain called for the foul. That's the fourth of the half for UNLV, number two on Rishwain. Job by Knox there of getting the defender off the feet. He did it with some nifty dribbling. Better footwork overall for the redshirt sophomore guard. Yeah, great job by Knox to be able to on that dribble drive, to be able to spin, get Julian Richwain up in the air off his feet. Second time at least that he's left his, his left his feet to try to make a, a block on the shot. But again, something the Rebels coaches said, we want to just make sure we stay down and make teams shoot over us. We're already tall and long on the wings. Knox makes the free throw to complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way. 69-61, the Rebel advantage with seven minutes to go. D.J. Thomas across the time stripe. Alabama State back in with 2-3 zone on defense. It's Thomas and Rishwing going back and forth. Thomas has it at the top of the key. He goes right side to Henley. Henley loses the handle but resets. With eight on the shot clock, he gives it to D.J. D.J. to Rishwing. Rishwing to the top of the key. He stops, he pops, he tries the three, and he drains it. Beautiful touch and a better shot from Rishwing. Gives the Rebels an 11-point lead. He turns it over on the other end. He steps in front of a pass. It's a three on two. Rishwing for three from the left. It's no good off the front of the iron. He was trying to go all the way as DJ Thomas steps in front of another pass. Alabama State turns it over twice through contact. Henley misses the lay-in. There's Bear Cherry on the putback two-hand slam. This is the type of runner rebel basketball that you want to see this team play. Get out in transition. Take early threes, early looks. If you don't get it, push back again in transition. Finish at the rim. Amar Knox trying to go 94 feet. He missed on a lay-in. Here comes Rishway in the other direction. It's to DJ on the left side. 
He picks a shot. He tries to go to Henley, and it's knocked away by Knox. On the other end now, it's Octave going one-on-one -on -one with Henley, and Octave with an easy lay-in as he flips it in over the UNLV forward, pushing the lead back to 11. And as great as a passer as Deion Thomas Jr. is, sometimes you want to see him be selfish. That's a great chance to pull up and shoot that transition through. 74 63s. The Rebels trying to finish this one up. DJ drives right, spins left, misses with the left hand. And here comes Alabama State going all the way across court with one pass. Tyler Mack with a three from in front of Gucci Rowe, and it's no good. Cherry to the floor. He grabs the board. He calls the timeout all in one motion. Bear Cherry with the wherewithal to call for the time out there. You've got to respect what, that, what he's doing in that phase, to be able to jump down, be the first guy on the floor um, at, at 6'11", and, and two bills and some change to be able to make that commitment. Great play there by Bear. 30-second timeout on the floor with 5.24 to go in the game. UNLV at one point earlier, Kurt, has had this lead up to 13 points, which to this point is still their biggest lead of the game. But Alabama State, pesky here in the early stages. Yeah, the Rebels ain't, haven't quite been able to knock that, that knockout punch, haven't been able to land it so far here late in this second half. But again, you like the Rebels are still chipping away. But I think one situation comes down to they're being a little too unselfish to, to try to make that extra pass. Sometimes, like we said, DJ needs to pull up, knock down that three in transition because sometimes your teammates expect you to take those shots. So that way, if anything, you have floor balance going the other way if you miss. That rebound by Bear was big for a lot of reasons. Most of which is because it gives him a double-double in his UNLV debut. Bear Cherry with 21 points on 9 of 10 shooting and 3 of 5 from the field goal line. With that last rebound, he is at 10 as he has posted a double-double in his Rebel debut. And I'm going to guess CT at this point. It may not be the last time we call a Bear, Ch a Bear Cherry double-double together. Oh, no, I, I think we're going to get used to that, and, and hopefully so, and rightfully so, because Bear, what he brings there offensively, soft touch on the inside, and it started from the first possession of the game, but then defensively taking him space, rooting out that post player, and then just the selflessness to be able to dive on the floor for the loose ball, to be able to do all the little things, to block shots, uh, just the right attitude to come in, especially the transfer, when you step in from the JUCO ranks and you're, and you're thrusting that position. But let's talk about the commitment he made before the season, to step in, to lose a bunch of weight, to get himself in playing shape at the Division One level, Hats off to Bear Cherry. Great debut as a running runner. His rebound and timeout keeps possession with the Rebels. Thomas goes down to Jalen Hill, who tries a left hand jam, but he is rejected. Just Stephen Walker put a little too much of the body into the Las Vegas native. And Hill fouled after missing the lay in. He'll have a chance for two shots with 5.15 to go on the 19th foul of the half and the fourth for just Stephen Walker in the game. Here's Jalen Hill tonight. Yet to attempt a shot. That was his first attempt from the field. He's got two assists and nothing else. As he played a ton of minutes as he misses his first of the two free throws. Hill's going to be a guy we're keeping an eye on here in the early part of the season. Started the first seven games last year before going down with a knee injury. There was question as to whether or not he was going to be granted the extra year of eligibility. He was, and he looked to be one of the leaders for this UNLV team as the second free throw falls, 75-63, the Rebel advantage. And Jalen Hill, a guy that's got a lot of experience with the Kruger family, obviously played for Coach Long Kruger at Oklahoma, decided to transfer back, being a Las Vegas native from Clark High School, coming home last year didn't go well, hand, wrist injury, then obviously a torn ACL at San Diego State at the beginning of January. Uh, but for him to be able to get back now to contribute, he's going to have a big role, not just scoring and defending, but being a leader on this team. On the other end, Knox tried to drive, and it was Hill called for his first foul. So he's got one point, one foul, two assists, and the Rebels with five team fouls in the second half. As Rich Wayne goes to the bench, here's Rob Whaley into the game, and he's guarding right away. The inbound goes to Stephen Walker. One more pass right side to T.J. Madlock, who's got Hill guarding him with five minutes and counting to go in the contest. Rebels lead by 12. Madlock dribbling slowly. Now switching on to him is Henley. He gives back upstairs to Octave with Hill on top of him. And one more pass left side. It's Knox going around D.J. Thomas. He goes up and over Rob Whaley. He misses on the lay-in, but just Stephen Walker cleans up the glass and makes it with the right hand. Ten-point lead, 75-65 for UNLV. And just Stephen Walker, guy from the onset of this game, was able to come out and knock down two big threes for the Hornets here, playing all well all-around game to be able to keep them in it early, but now as the Rebels start to get some separation. UNLV working it around the perimeter. Jalen Bedford's got it at the top of the key. Bounces to Jalen Hill at the free throw line. He rises from an inch behind the charity strike and drops it. Nothing but net. Lead back to 12. Alabama State in desperation mode with 4-10 to play. Right side, three-point attempt by Mack. Falls. Nothing but net for Tyler Mack, the Maryland Eastern Shore transfer. 77-68 now the lead as D.J. Thomas more than content to slow this one way up. 
Brings it across the time stripe. Goes left side of Bedford. Bedford back up top to Henley. Henley looking for DJ on the right. Picks up the dribble instead. Goes down to the far side corner for Whaley. Whaley one on one with Walker. He dribbles. He goes up and under. He finishes through. Contact and drops it. What a finish by Rob Whaley as he hikes up the crowd underneath the basket. That's what to expect from Rob Whaley Jr. And this was all started again by the knockdown three by Mack for the Hornets, but coming back the other way. Deion Thomas slowing it down and knowing that you've got Bear Cherry when he's in, or you've got Big Rob Whaley to control the tempo. Points in the paint, big thing for the Rebels here tonight. Rebels lead by 11 as we enter into our final media timeout of opening night. UNLV leads Alabama State 79-68. Back for the final three minutes and 40 seconds on the other side. This is the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield. Have you been injured in an accident? At West Coast Trial Lawyers, we have won thousands of cases and more than $1.5 billion for our clients. We're multilingual. Hablamos Español. On call 24-7. De Guardia, 24 horas. And you don't pay until we win. Y no pagas hasta que ganemos. And here at WCTO, we're dedicated to treating you like family. We make a real change in people's lives. Just ask our president and former federal prosecutor, Nima Romani. So call us today for a free consultation. In the heart of downtown Las Vegas, a sports oasis awaits. Stadium Swim, the ultimate outdoor amphitheater, built for the ultimate sports fan, with a colossal screen that brings the game closer than ever. Reserve a day bed, private cabana, or lounge in the center of it all. Six pools to dive into as the game heats up. And the best part, there's never an off season. Open 365 days a year. Stadium Swim, it's always spectator season. Gatorade, the world's most superior sports drink. Designed to rehydrate, replenish, and refuel. It fuels the best because it is the best. Gatorade, is it in you? Gatorade, the world's most superior sports drink. Designed to rehydrate, replenish, and refuel. It fuels the best because it is the best. Gatorade, is it in you? Running Rebel Basketball, the UNLV Sports Network from Learfield is presented by Intermountain Health. Hello, Las Vegas. Hello, Sunset over the Strip. We're Intermountain Health, and we're here to part, be a part of your Las Vegas life, and we're here to help you live an even healthier one. Intermountain Health, official health partner of UNLV Athletics, and also by Howard Hughes. There is something beautiful happening in Las Vegas, life in Summerlin, a premium master plan community designed to live as good as it looks. Find your new home at Summerlin.com. After the foul charge to just Steven Walker forces him out of the game with number five in the contest. UNLV with 3.44 to play in their opening day game against Alabama State leads 79-68 there. Cherry with a 21.10 rebound double-double. DJ Thomas with 12 points and seven assists. And Rob Whaley to the free throw line for a pair of shots. He has six points on three field goal makes. He's also pulled down four boards as he was fouled by just Steven Walker and misses the first of the two free throw attempts. And on the rebound, it goes out of bounds. Looked like it went off the hands of Micah Octave to the 20 on the shot clock. 3.42 to play. The Rebels hold on. They'll be inbounding from under their own basket. DJ Thomas barks out the signal. It's Hill, Whaley, Henley, and Bedford awaiting the pass. It goes way up top to Bedford. He catches it at the logo and resets the offense. J. Thomas looks to the bench, turns his head to the right, and keeps an eye on Kevin Kruger. Takes the screen from Whaley to the right, gives to Hill on the right side. Back upstairs to Bedford, and a foul before the drive attempt called away from the ball on Ubong Okan. And that's going to be number five on the big man as well. So the two tallest players on the roster is in really the only depth of the four and the five spots. Just Stephen Walker and Ubong Okan have both fouled out. Alabama State with 10 team fouls in the half as well. Here comes Mario Andrews, the only other center on the roster, the only other player above 6'5". Sees any playing time for this Alabama State team, and Whaley goes back to the free throw line, this time for a guaranteed two shots and the double bonus. 3.31 to play. Line drive release with the left hand goes, and Whaley with seven points in the game. Levels at least in the front court CT have done a good job of 
They're drawing the fouls, both from Walker and Okong tonight. Yeah, from the opening tip, that first possession for the Rebels, throwing inside the big bear cherry, allowing him to anchor on the, in, on the inside to be able to go to work offensively over left shoulder, over right shoulder, catching lobs, putbacks. Between him and Rob Whaley, the damage that they've done on the inside, obviously it shows fouling out the two big players for the Hornets. But just the commitment for the Rebels to throw it inside and just shows the versatility that Coach Kevin Kruger has. It's not all going to be predicated by Deedon Thomas breaking down the defense out of a pick and roll or an ISO situation. Throw it inside, play inside out. That's how you can really get some separation. Whaley's second free throw miss. And on the rebound attempt, Jalen Benford called for his second foul. Six of the half on UNLV. Alabama State trails 80 to 68. Rebels extending the lead back to 12. Madlock at the top of the key, drives right, looking for a pass on the far side baseline. It's knocked away by Hill, but able to pick it up as Amar Knox on the layup attempt. He drains it, and he is fouled. Amar Knox turning what looked like a stellar defensive play from Jalen Hill into a make and a potential for an old-school three-point play with the free throw coming up. And even on the, it seems like the Rebels have a comfortable lead here, 10-point lead right now, but with Alabama State going to the line to, to get a chance to, to finish it, off on a three-point play. There's still three minutes, nine seconds left. A lot of ball game left here. The Rebels can't sit on their hands. They've got to continue to play, finish plays all the way through. That deflection's got to be gathered, got to be going the other way. Knox drains it. Three-point play complete. He's got a team-high 15 points, although he's just 5 of 12 shooting. 80 to 71 the lead with three minutes and counting to go here in the first game of the year. D.J. Thomas brings it up, goes right side to Henley, resets to D.J. at the top of the key. He drives through the lane, throws up a left-hand floater. Nothing but net for D.J. Thomas. That's exactly what you want to do. When you see that 1-3-1 one, one zone, you want to go with a two-guard front, get the ball swung, get it, a, get it swung back, attack that gap, get into the paint, and a tough finish there by the lefty off the wrong foot. 14 points for D.J., second assist of the night for Henley. 235 and counting to play. It's 82-71. Matlock at the top of the key tries to drive past Cherry. He goes in a errant pass that Knox picks up and fires up with the right hand from the left side elbow. And he makes it to make it 82-73. Alabama State not going away in this one. No, they're not, they're not going away. But if that's the kind of shots they're going to make, that's what you want. Make them, force them to drive, skip it to the weak side corner, shot fake, and then make a tough pull-up jump shot. That's okay. Henley goes downstairs to Cherry. He slams it home over the defender. Andrews called for the foul. Cherry pumps his chest with his back to the floor. That's the big man, Bear Cherry who now has 23 points to go along with 10 rebounds. I mean, Jeremiah is making this unbearable for the Alabama State defense <laughs> on the interior, punishing them every way as possible, finishing there through the pressure and through the contact. Man, I figured we'd get to December at least before <laughs> one of those punts came out. There's many more where that came from, Matt. Don't you worry. Former running Rebel <laughs> Curtis Terry in midseason form already. 84-73 the lead as Bear Cherry makes the free throw, completing the three-point play. And the Rebel lead back to 12 with 2.12 to go. Amar Knox with 17 points. Brings it up from left to right. Hands off on the left side to Octave. Octave with Matt coming up from the top of the key. Has it now. Now it's C.J. Hines. Hines goes all the way down. He's rejected. Bear Cherry swats it off the backboard. Here come the Rebels the other way with a three on two. It's Bedford elevating over two defenders. And he makes the lay in between them both. Matt Locke. Quickly pushing the tempo with under two minutes to play. He goes in amongst the trees, and Jalen Hill fouls him on the way up. Although it looks like Jalen Hill very much disagrees with the call there. It's 87-73, biggest lead of the night for the Rebels, who have made their last five shots from the field. In the last possessions, defense to offense for the Rebels. They get the blow by drive to the Hornets, but Bear does a great job of protecting the basket, gets that run out for Bedford, but then the other way. Looked like good, solid position defense there by Jalen Hill. The ref didn't see it that way, but again, nonetheless, great job focusing on that transition defense for the Rebels. That's been a key for the game all the game long, and done a great job again there. E.J. Madlock to the line, and the son of head coach Tony Madlock makes the first of two. Preseason first team all swack. He was second team all swack last year. He averaged a team high 16 points a game. And as he misses his second free throw attempt. He's got 11 tonight. He'll foul on the rebound. Going down with a little too much oomph on it is Mario Andrews. And already in the double bonus. Everybody heading to the other basket. Jalen Hill will have two free throws coming up. Rebels. On the verge of putting this one into an unreachable lead. 87-74 on top by 13 with a minute 46 to play. A pair of makes here would be huge as far as the final result. Alabama State team has done a good job tonight of really never letting it get away from them. But we could be seeing that here in the late stages. Those first of two, no good. A little too much mustard on that one off the back of the rim. And this is where a situation where you want him to see the Rebels try to get that separation. Try to put the game away, put the nail in the coffin. 
uh, whatever cliche that you want to use. But in order to do that, you got to be able to step up, get stops on defense and the offense. Man, you got to make sure you get to the foul line and then convert those opportunities. Jalen Hill, who makes the second of the two free throws, extends the lead to 88-74. And with the buck 46 to play, Brooklyn Knicks comes in for Jalen Hill. Keeping an eye on the minutes coming back from that knee injury last year. Hill looks like his night is done. Four points on one field goal make, two free throw breaks as well. Minute 40 to play as Alabama State tries to find some offense. Driving and dishing his heights. He goes left side in front of his own bench. A make from three-point range from T.J. Madlock. Showing off the shooting touch there. Might be too little too late as the lead is now trimmed to just 11. Henley brings it up on the far side. He gets trapped, so he gives it to D.J. D.J. from the top of the key goes left side. Bedford on the catch and shoot. No good off the back of the rim. Rebound tipped to Hicks. Hicks goes downstairs, and Henley on the right-hand lay-in from the baseline. Banks it off the glass. It's 90-77. to 77. 66 seconds left in the opening day game as Amar Knox and Alabama State. And it seems like they're content to slow this one up and lay out another possession or two. Knox drives around a screen, tries to go over top of Bear oh. Cherry somehow from the rafters. Floats it over Cherry for a two-point make from 10 feet away. Under a minute to play, it's 90-79. With any luck, the Rebels hoping this is their last possession of the game. Brooklyn Hicks has it on the right side in front of his own bench. It's back to Henley. DJ Thomas clapping for the ball. He's got it at the logo. He said, give me the ball. We're going to slow this way up. Ten seconds on the shot clock. 36 seconds left in the opening day game of the season. Thomas with six. Puts the ball on the floor. He's guarded by Octave. He fires for three. He drains it through contact. Falling to the ground is DJ Thomas. What a shot. What a way to cap off this one. Amar Knox down the left side. He crosses the time stripe and calls a timeout with 25.7 seconds to play. The shot clock is off. This crowd here at the Thomas and Mack Center is still thinking about that DJ Thomas make. He was standing on the corner of the U, a low-go three for DJ Thomas. Again, Dedon Thomas Jr., a guy that's fearless, that'll step up and take the big shots, has no worry if he's going to make it or miss it. But in that case, with the shot clock winding down, wasn't going to risk putting the ball in somebody else's hands. Eyes the guy, jab, step, jab, step, off the dribble, pull up three from deep from the logo. Great shot there by the sophomore. 93-79, UNLV leading with just under 26 seconds left to play. We can start to look ahead at the upcoming schedule for UNLV. Mentioned the matchup against Memphis this Saturday. It'll be against Omaha on the 14th, 10 days from now. Pepperdine comes to town on the 20th, and New Mexico State on the 23rd wraps up the five straight home games to start out the year for UNLV. Meanwhile, for Alabama State, We'll go to LSU later on this week. You want to talk about a matchup to watch. Their only home non-conference game is against Virginia Lynchburg on the 18th. They play in two separate tournaments, including the Chris Paul HBCU tournament at the end of December. That's a new one. Or that's a new location, rather. That's one that had been played in Las Vegas these last couple of years. And Alabama State and HBCU loves taking part in those types of events. Yeah, and, and for Chris Paul, obviously the future NBA Hall of Famer, to be able to, with his foundation, the Chris Paul Foundation, uh, teaming up with the HBCUs, be able to put on this event, obviously the Jordan brand having a big backing of it, to move that event to Connecticut, to bring it all under one roof at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Great opportunity for, uh, for HBCUs to be showcased in terms of what they bring, not just academically, but athletically. So again, hats off to Chris Paul. And it's a great opportunity for Alabama State to, again, get on the national stage and to be able to show what they can do. Hornets inbound in front of their own bench. Yeah, with the shot clock turned off, no sense of urgency as Amar Knox dribbles on the logo, guarded by Brooklyn Hicks. Everybody's standing around. This looks like it'll be the last possession of the game. Hicks backs off to the three-point three, three line with 10 in the game. Driving to the right side is Knox. He gets around Bedford. He goes up top baseline, over top of Bear Cherry, who grabs the rebound on the miss. Ball saved in bounds, and Dante Bass trying to slam it in, but he's rejected at the buzzer. What a way to finish. 93-79 the final as UNLV moves to 1-0 to start out the 2024 2025 campaign and CT that, that finish kind of a good example of, of what we saw tonight from this UNLV team able to make it offensively work when they needed to and defensively stifle it when they needed it most.